So you're a newer player inside of Diablo Immortal and you're wondering what's the best way to spend your time. Maybe you don't want to play with friends. Maybe you just want to be as efficient as you can be in the short amount of time that you have to play. Today, I have a good friend, Senile Sarge, with me to ask me some questions he's facing as a new player. Sarge, welcome to the channel. Thanks for coming here today with your questions. I appreciate your time. And I, everyone that doesn't know, Senile Sarge on YouTube, where he's putting out regular content on a variety of different games. We'll get more into that at the end of the video. But you're into Diablo Immortal. You've played a bit. Give us a quick preview or snippet of your experience and where you're struggling inside of the game. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, first, thanks for having me on, Echo. I appreciate it. Uh, and, and also, thank you for answering these. Uh, th these new questions I'm going to be asking you here in just a little bit. Uh, so I started uh, really right when the game uh, released, had uh, loads of fun, you know, play with friends. We uh, we kind of made it through the campaign and then I think kind of hit like a roadblock. I, I would say from a monetary perspective, uh, played a lot of mobile games. So, you know, spending money in the, in the games, I'm kind of used to that being something that happens, but not something that I normally do. So I think there was a little bit of a kind of push off there for me on the idea that I had to pay to win. But I but I like the idea of the PVP and all of this, but that, that kind of pulled me away. Mm -hmm. So I stepped away. I, I came back uh, probably one or two of the seasons to come in and like look at things and, and to play. Uh, I have bought the battle passes, uh, a couple of those. But other than that, I've been pretty much, you know, free to play. I haven't and I don't even think I finished the battle passes that I purchased, uh, to be fair, just because of it. Uh, so now we're coming back into it. So probably 200 hours or so in the game i wouldn't say that that may be a little bit far-fetched over on the right side uh paragon level i think 200 or something right now so i'm still very new uh inside of the game usually i come in play for a couple hours uh a week and that's about it so that, that's about my time inside of the game all right so then what's your what's your sticking point point? and by the way there's a lot of people who are in your shoes a lot of people who picked up the game diablo mortal was going to take over the world it let some people down in some ways other people are still playing like myself since day one but a lot of people will come and go they'll hear about an update that comes to the game and they'll be like oh let me go check that out and soon we have the shadow knight coming to the game we're gonna have a lot of resurgence a lot of new people diving back in or i should say old people diving back in to see what it's all about. The game's gotten better for the most part with every update, which is every month. And I think uh, minus some of the, you know, heavy pay to win stuff inside of the game, Diablo Moral is in a pretty good place and players like yourself and even like myself could really enjoy what the game has to offer. So you are someone that you've told me you like to kind of play solo. You're a player that you don't want to have to group up with someone or a team every single time you get in. So I'm going to keep all of that in mind when answering your questions today. But you have five questions for me. So why don't you start us out with that first question and I'll do my best to answer for you and everyone watching. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so uh, the big part is finish the campaign, right? Um, and I would even say some of the side tasks and other stuff that that's inside of the game. I, I, now I'm kind of like lost, right? Like if I've hit this progression kind of stop where I, I'm not sure what to focus on to get better gear. Like, you know, should I go to Elder Rift? Should I go to... You know, is there, is there somewhere I, or something I should be doing to get better gear? All right, that's a good question. And to start things out, Diablo Moral is and was intended to be a social game. Uh, in talking with the developers and in just knowing the game, they always wanted it to be very social. So there's a lot of things inside of the game that are implemented kind of forcing you to be social, like warbands and clans and shadows versus immortals. These are all, all right. things that you need to be with people to participate in. But a lot of players, myself some days as well, I just don't want to play with other people. I just want to dive in and grind. So you asked about gear. First of all, and I'm showing it on the screen now for everyone to watch, we have our primary gear, which is your legendary style gear. At your level, when you start hitting Paragon, all the gear you're wearing is going to be legendary. These all have essences inside of them, which essentially are going to be able to change what your skills can do. There's many different builds inside of the game that you could build. Um, there's some that are featured in the game. We, of course, have them on the channel as well, where you can kind of get ideas. I just put one out for my Barbarian, which I'm in love with. So you have your primary gear, and then you have your secondary gear. You, these are ones that are going to give you additional stats. You put your little gems in there, you know, the ones that you just kind of get from running through dungeons and things like that, or running through um, hidden lairs. And you're going to get different set properties from these. Two pieces that match are going to unlock a set property. If you have four pieces that match you're gonna unlock the second set property. And if you have six pieces that match, you'll unlock the third. You can mix and match this any way that you want. Now, the way that you primarily are going to find these set items are in dungeons. And yes, you can solo dungeons, but as you get higher and higher, this becomes super difficult. So um, 
doing this is something that you're going to probably want to do with a team, which is not giving you the answer that you want right there, Sarge. So start off the bat, sorry about that. There are other ways to get these things inside of the game through events and stuff, but primarily it's through dungeons. But your regular gear, your primary gear, is going to be found in everything you do inside of the game. It could happen in Elder Rifts, it could happen in Challenge Rifts, it's from events, it's from open world farming. And some of the best ways that you can get it, and I'm right over here now by the Rarities and Antiques dealer. When we farm inside of the game, we get a bunch of gold. Every day, if you don't have the gear that you want, I recommend buying 10 Mysterious Weapons and 10 Mystery Primary Armors. I don't worry about these secondary ones too much down here, I really focus on the top ones. I say 10 because after 10, the price goes up. This is where you can get yourself some good legendary pieces of gear. But in addition to that, I'm going to take us over to the bounty board. This is, again, I know you do the bounty board. I know that you're all about it, but there are really good rewards that you get from it. And you could kind of double dip because when you go over to the bounty board, it gives you eight tasks per day, which can stack up to three days. If you don't log on for two days, on day three, you'll have 24 of these things. And you're going to be able to accept them. You could even accept and do them with a group, which is something that you're not interested in doing. Once accepted, you complete these tasks, which are all in the same zone. You return over here to Derek, and he's going to give you a bunch of gear, oftentimes a legendary. Also in that searching and just open world stuff, you're going to be able to find things called Monstrous Essence. Monstrous Essence are these orange globes. When you find these orange globes and collect 10 of them, you're going to turn them into one of these Haradric altars, and you're going to be guaranteed a legendary piece of gear. These are the best ways to be guaranteed gear when you're trying to level up. And to be honest, if you're a casual player or someone that's not interested in playing with a bunch of other people, really, your gear doesn't need to be the best on your server. Your gear just needs to be enjoyable for you to play. So you could take it with a little bit more of a, of a casual element to it. And of course, you're going to want to upgrade this stuff along the way, which you do with the blacksmith. And you're going to want to upgrade this stuff along the way, which you do through Elder Rifts, which we'll probably talk about later on in the video. How, how is that starting, though? Did I give you a, a decent idea of where to find your gear? Yeah, no, I, I, I think you did. And I think one thing just to mention is, is, is I think solo for me is not inside of a clan. I still do use matchmaking often. So I think when you mention dungeons immediately, I, I don't run a lot of dungeons. So already you've given me a, a really good uh, uh, opportunity for that because I also thought back, I was looking at some of the uh, stuff inside of the game where I often see the dungeons and there's like these green arrows. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure what the arrows are. I don't know if like it's empowered or, or what it is um, above the green gear. So maybe you can just speak on that real quick, and then uh, then I'll move on to the next question. This is a little addendum question you have here for us, yeah, Sarge. Sorry. All right, no, this is great. Um, so we're getting into some extra tips, which is great. When you see these double arrows right here, so right now on the Silent Monastery for me, I have double arrows up. It's gonna double, or it's gonna increase my chance of getting set items inside of that inside of that dungeon. So utilizing matchmaking is great because that means you're gonna be able to get nice set items, and you're gonna be able to really be able to upgrade your build because you're not kind of you're still participating in the best way to get that type of gear. In addition to that, when you farm dungeons, every three dungeons you farm per day, you get one free high quality equipment, secondary piece mm. of gear. So for me right now, I haven't farmed dungeons in a few days. And like the bounty board, this will stack for three days. So I can do every three dungeons I run, I'll get one free guaranteed piece of green gear. So today, if I spend a little time on dungeons, I can get three of them, not to mention any that may drop organically inside of the dungeon itself. So glad you're doing dungeons. It's a great way to progress, a great way to upgrade. Um, and we'll get into again later how to upgrade that gear. Oh, that, that that's awesome. So see, I didn't even know that, that you could do that. E even though it's it's in the book. Um, there's a lot in the book, to be fair. Who reads okay. the book? Who reads the book? Yeah, who reads it? It's, it's a lot of information. That's what <laughs> yeah, I can tell you. Exactly. Um, I, I think it's part of it. Okay, so the gear I understand, dungeons, Obviously, you can go purchase it. Uh, we can get it from Rifts, uh, Challenge Rifts, all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. uh, open world stuff. Now comes the next question. I think the thing that I consistently have issues with is understanding what's more important for me. Is it combat rating or is it resonance, right? Because I've got these low legendary gems. Again, <laughs> free-to-play player, like right? So my resonance, I look at yours, and I'm a little bit peanut butter and jealous, uh, to be fair, because I'm down at like 300, right? Like I'm way, way on the bottom side. So... Can you kind of talk me through that? Which one's more important? Sure. Um, okay, 
Quick answer, and then I'll get into the details. If you're going to be a whale and spend thousands of dollars inside of the game, gem resonance is going to be important because that's going to help you if you want to do PvP. But your combat rating is what's going to allow you to progress through the game and get to those higher hell difficulties. It's all based on your combat rating. So, the way that I'll break this down is I used to have all five star legendary gems. The problem is I spend five bucks a month in the game. I'm not a whale. I'm not a heavy spender. I just spend casually because I like the battle pass rewards. I like the skins and cosmetics and I don't mind supporting the game. But recently I swapped out one of my five star gems and I put in a one star gem, a gem that's probably the best one star gem in the game. It's the Berserker's Eye. It essentially is going to increase damage that you deal. Now, in doing this, I was able to resonate the gem. What that means is I was able to get this gem to level 10, and once getting it to level 10, it opens up two additional slots where you can put other one-star gems, which are going to add to the resonance and unlock perks for you right here. As you can see, I just got six extra combat rating here and, six, and five extra combat rating here, upgraded at level 10, which gives me an extra 3% uh, attack damage for my primary. That may be confusing. Also, this is not a free process. This is the one thing inside of Diablo Immortal, Awakening Gems, that is not free. You must spend actual cash to do it, which for a lot of players is uh, non-negotiable because you're not gonna do it. But for me, I realized that these five-star gems, let's go for example, um, my Berserker's Eye. I'm not gonna get this one much higher. My Berserker's Eye is going to be very heavy spend. I'm going to need tons of gems uh, to put in here. Multiple Berserker's Eye gems that are already ranked up in high level. So for me, I realized it would be more valuable to get one star and two star gems over time res um, awakened so I can get that extra gem resonance and the buffs that you get from that. In addition, you'll notice that my piece of gear right here is purple and that is allowing me to get extra buffs from whatever slot this is in because I awakened the piece of gear. Awakening can be confusing. To be honest, I have a whole video out kind of taking you through the process on this specifically because it's a confusing process. But for players that are not going to be big whale spenders inside of the game, I'd say stick with the one and two star gems. And if you get a five star, throw it in there for fun. But is resonance more important or is combat rating was the original question. Residence is going to really come into play when you're doing PvP. Top residence right now inside of the game, and I laughed when you said that I had high residence with 1,400, because top residence is around 7,000. Some of the largest players that spent over $200,000 in the game have 7,000 residence. If I go into PvP with them, they will walk next to me and my character will die, essentially. But combat rating is something that you can grind up through your gear, through the, the gems that you add inside, through essentially everything that you do, your essences that you pull from your gear as well, that can get your combat rating up. Your combat rating is what's gonna allow you to be able to handle high level dungeons, handle high level hot, hell difficulties, and it's gonna help you in PVP and all that as well. So for someone like yourself and someone like me, my bigger focus is gonna be combat rating. I wanna get my combat rating right now. My goal is 14,000. And I actually took a little bit of a hit on my residence because I was trying to get my combat rating up. So for me, combat rating is where it's at. I think it's the most important part. Unless if I, like I said, you're going to be a big spender because the only way to get big gem residence is by spending big, big bucks. Okay. Yeah. That, okay. That, that makes sense. Okay. So I, so I've been doing it right. Um, in some cases where I've been focused on the combat rating because I, I, I saw a natural kind of bump that just happened where I was only in uh, hell one which I know seems weird because I was having problems. I got that, I started focusing on rating. Now mm -hmm. I'm at hell four and that's really been like over a week. I mean, it's it, it was that quick by me just, so that would make sense to me now that the combat rating, um, I was doing it wrong before because yeah. I was focusing on resonance, not understanding that really, um, and, and I only have one star, two star gems too. So it's not like, you know, I'm just, I'm just throwing as many things at it as I can to try to get them up. And it wasn't really doing anything for me. Yeah, I get that. And you're also being able to take care of the catch up mechanic. If I click right here, it'll show me that the uh, server is currently at Paragon level 732. I'm at 723. So I'm getting 150% extra rewards. You being on the same server as me, which is the Iceburn tier, if anyone wants to join. Uh, you're probably getting like 800 times reward. So you're going to be able to progress really quickly. Also, anytime you jump from one hell difficulty to the next, 
you're going to be able to upgrade this secondary gear that we spoke of. And those are going to come with massive upgrades for your combat rating. Okay. It, so now, now we got a momentum to, to what we talked about earlier. What do you mean by that? Is you just said upgrade? Cause I'm still wearing the same secondary items that I had in hell one. All right. Well, then that's part of the reason why your combat rating is low. My friend, every time, <laughs> every time you jump from one hell difficulty to, to the next, you have yeah. new levels of gear available. This is how you're going to always be grinding in Diablo Immortal. Uh, we have Inferno difficulty coming, which is going to be after Hell 8. That was um, found in the code. I'm going to have to research for all of these pieces of gear for myself personally. Now, a little tip. Let me take you over to the blacksmith really quickly, because for me, I don't love going for dungeons and trying to find the actual piece of gear that I want. Out of all the pieces of gear that I need for my set to have those functions, it's frustrating because it's going to take forever for them to drop. So what I'll do is I will run my favorite dungeon. What's my favorite dungeon? The one I can get done the quickest. I want to be able to do as many dungeons in as short a time as possible. To everyone, this is different. I'll come over here and you'll notice that you can craft sets. I don't focus on the dungeon that's going to give me a certain set piece because every dungeon offers you different items and they're not all available everywhere, but I don't care. All I'll do is I'll get as many of these as I can, I'll break them down, I'll sacrifice them at the blacksmith, and I will get these um, these things right over here. They're called Fabled Wisps, and there's all different levels of these things. Um, and then I could craft any one that I want. I'll take five yeah. of them, and I'll take a couple of these flowing shards, and I'll be able to craft any gear that I want, which will be really helpful, and I don't have to really worry about, oh man, I didn't get that piece of gear in this rift. I mean, in this um, in this dungeon, I'm gonna keep on grinding it. I'll just get them for the resources that I get for breaking them down, and then I'll craft whichever ones I want. It's much easier. But if if I were to imagine in your bag, if you were to come over to this sack over on the right hand side, you'll probably have um, a bunch of these things. You have the fabled wisps. You have five, six seven and eight you probably have some lower ones as well if i don't need I, if they're even available down there these level fives will only be able to get me the ones from hell five difficulty these only hell six but you know i could go craft something with this break it down and, and have some more materials but you get the idea here run as many dungeons as you can get as many green items as you can turn them into the resources you need to craft any ones that you want and rinse and repeat every time you get to a new hell difficulty because it's just something that never ends. Well, th this is now the second answer where Dungeons <laughs> has come up. The thing that I'm not running a lot of. So that that's uh, so it's good. Thank you so much. I also didn't know that you could craft. Uh, <laughs> I, I hate to say this, right? I don't want to say this because uh, your, your chat's probably going to mock me. Uh, but mm -hmm. it, and it's fine. I've got two yellows uh, for the secondary gear. So like, yeah, yeah, I've, I've got problems. You'll so I don't right. even have set items uh, for everything. But anyway, okay. So from that, now let's move to what I think the next part is, which is like the legendary gems, right? I I look at those legendary gems and I'm constantly trying to figure out which ones are the best one. I, I saw you have Berserker Eye on yours. I'm a Barbarian. So, you know, for me, damage output is super important. I'm always a spin to win guy. Barbarian is really the only thing I'll play other than like a Druid. Mm -hmm. But um, so Berserker's Eye, I love it. All of a sudden I start looking at all these new gems that have come out and I'm looking at them and I'm like, man, do I need, do I need health? Do I need... You know, should I do more damage? Should I, like, there's so many of these things. Maybe you can help me better understand what should I be looking for? Again, thinking free to play, right? Um, what's the best options that I can do? All right. Now this is a very broad question because it's 100% dependent on your class. You know, you have um, the Necromancer, which is its own class and its own. You're dealing with massive amounts of summons. There's gonna be particular gems that are gonna buff your summons and your spawned creatures that I won't need as a Barbarian. I'm not spawning anything, so I don't need that type of a gem. Um, you have a Wizard, which is gonna just kind of be a very different opposite kind of gameplay than we're playing as a Barbarian or a Crusader or a Monk. Um, and I mean, the way it is right now, there are going to be five strength classes inside of the game, including the new class incoming, and only two intelligence ones being the Necro and the Wizard. Um, but let's focus in on your Barbarian specifically, or any class where you are thinking about being a tanky guy that just runs in there and, you know, spins to win and just slams, slams down damage on people. You're trying to get as much damage as you can. So for me, a gem that I really love is Berserker's Eye. For someone that's not going to really want to be a spender, because very simply, 
it's going to increase the chance. No, it's where is it here? Increases the damage you deal by five and a half percent. This is at a, a level one. I think it's up to me on my piece of gear since I've gotten it to level 10. Um, where are we here? Let me just take it you there and find it. Increases it by 16% I'm getting right now. That's just straight up easy extra damage being done. Now, I will say, if you are someone that is going to be a battle pass purchaser or free to play or someone that just isn't spending thousands in the game, don't focus on, on five star gems because to upgrade them, you're probably, and with some serious grinding, you'll probably get stopped out around level four if you're really good and invested in the game level five. And from there, that would probably take you a year to get to. Keep in mind, I don't even have one there and it's been a year. Um, and it takes some luck that you have to get spins on. You're gonna be doing a lot of work here in the shop, buying things with platinum that you're you know, selling back and forth. But you wanna know what your primary thing is gonna be. I interviewed someone the other day on the channel who is a monk. And the way that he cares about being a monk is surviving. He wants to be a thorn in people's side in PvP. He's not going for kills. He doesn't often get too many kills, but he wants to be a distraction to everyone on the map. So his build, and I can't tell you specific gems that he used for that because I don't remember off the top of my head, but he's gonna go for everything that's gonna allow him to shield himself up and to protect himself, nothing for damage. I'm talking about legendary gems, and I'm talking about skills, and I'm talking about his secondary gems. Me as a Barbarian, I want to throw as much damage as possible. Now, let's talk about five stars a little bit because I will throw two out there which are the best in the game. If you decide that there are two that maybe you happen to find it from a Legendary Crest and you get lucky and you're like, oh, I could probably get it to level three. My second favorite in the game is Seeping Bile. This one is going to poison enemies and just drop more damage. Slow them down as you progress things and as you can see, things will you'll get more abilities as they go. Again, this is a five-star gem. It's expensive if you wanna buy one and it's difficult to upgrade. The best gem in my opinion inside of the game right now is the Blood Soaked Jade. And this one is just straight up, increases the damage you deal by 8% while at full life with a maximum bonus of 4% while at low life, increases your movement speed as well. I like this, even if it's not leveled up too much because I want the speed, it still gives me good damage and it's just one of the, it's probably the best gem inside of the game. So those are two that if you happen to run into them and you pick them up, I'd slot them into your Barbarian, your Crusader, your Monk. They're, you can't go wrong. Honestly, in any class, these are two that you can't ignore. I go with the Echoing Shade because it has my name in it, first of all, but also it creates more Barbarians. So I can have up to three Barbarians and they just are dropping extra damage. But again, that's one that is gonna be a five-star gem, which you're not gonna really be looking into or, or really focused on. So you want things that are gonna really benefit what your build is made for. My build, I'm focused on dropping damage, consistent damage, burn damage with my Barbarian. If I show you guys my class really quickly, I'll show you the skills that I personally am using. Whirlwind, Sprint, Wrath of the Berserker, Undying Rage, which is all changed up with the legendary essences that I'm using that make these all act differently. So really there are literally hundreds of builds you can do inside of the game. A handful that are really good, a bunch that are not so good. Um, I, I, think I, I think I broke that down. Oh, there's one more gem that I think is very valuable that most people don't remember. And that are these boys right here, the Fervent Fangs. It's a two star gem. You unlock them from your battle pass. I believe you get two, maybe three per season. You can't get them anywhere else except for from the Boon of Plenty, which is an additional $10 per subscription per month. But these are also nice. This is gonna be the next one I use for my Barbarian, which is why I'm saving a bunch of them. Each time you deal damage to an enemy, that enemy now takes 0.8 increased damage from your attacks up to a maximum of 8% at 10 stacks. This is at level one. These level two, these two star gems are more difficult to upgrade than one stars, but nowhere's near as difficult as the five stars. Little pro tip here as well. If you wanna make sure that you don't accidentally spend these gems or use them as food, there's this button right here. If you click on that, it will unlock or lock it. If it's locked, it means it can't be used as food, it can't be sold and it's stuck in your inventory. So it's wise when you're trying to save something like I am this other seeping bile, which I'm using for upgrade, 
keep it locked so I don't accidentally spend it and make a huge mistake. So I hope that was a little bit of guidance for gems. Again, it's really specific to what you're trying to do with your class. But you as a barbarian, I'd be going for damage and uh, trying to just drop as much of it as I can. Okay, great. All right. Uh, yeah, I think that helps. And uh, thanks for the lock tip. Uh, that would have been nice about a week ago. Or <laughs> I, uh, it, 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 yeah, do, don't, don't ever hit the auto button. Auto button no. is bad, right? Uh, Unless if yeah, you I, really I lock that. down all the gems that are important to you, auto, no, do it manually. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah. Hey, one trial learning is what we like to call it. That's all um, right. Okay, so the next thing is, so I usually I'm putting it about two hours a day, right? I, I've seen a couple different videos from uh, from Diablo Immortal creators about just kind of what to do inside of, of that of that two hours. And sometimes it may be a little bit less, but I think two hours, you know, usually an hour in the morning, an hour in the, in the evening. Um, I know the baseline stuff, right? The But I, I would love to just kind of hear you kind of talk over real quick of, hey, he, here's the top things I would do within that hour to, to help me do some of the things we already talked about, right? You know, mm -hmm. getting gear, getting combat rating up and things like that. Yeah. Um, well, you're going to want to take advantage of what the game is giving you extra rewards for, right? You're going to want to take advantage of anything that you're getting a buff from. Now, I've done videos on this before, and you're very similar to me. I probably spend about two hours inside of the game a day as well. Remember, though, as I mentioned with the bounty board over here, you don't have to jo go on every day because they will stack for three days. You won't miss any rewards. But number one, it's going to be bounty board events. Do your bounty boards. You get open world farming from that. You get bonus rewards for completing those, battle pass, progression for completing that. And as I mentioned before, you can unlock things, uh, the monstrous essence, which can upgrade your bestiary, which will essentially give you a free legendary. So that's number one. You're kind of killing multiple birds with one stone there. Number two, I always like to run through this over here. I call it the gauntlet, but really it is, it is not the gauntlet. It's the sanctum. Inside of the sanctum, you use those keys. You're going to be getting a bunch of these keys right here. The aspirant keys. These are going to be able to allow you to upgrade in another way, which we didn't even really focus on right here. Um, allow me to show you really quickly. So when you use those keys, you're going to unlock these tokens, which you'll fill in your Haradrim. Essentially, what this is going to do is more damage, more life, more armor, more ways for you to get that extra stuff. Now, I do recommend when you run through the gauntlet, and again, I've said this in a few videos before, at the end, there are chests you can open. Only open three per day. If you open more than three per day, you'll be going negative on your aspirant keys, and it will stop you from progressing until the final bonus chest, which will net you the most rewards. So I tell everyone what you should do is open three per day. The first one is free. The second chest is one aspirant key, and the third chest is offering you two aspirant keys, which means you get three chests for three keys, and it allows you to build up an abundance of them. Notice I have 99, 99, 37, and 2. I don't know why they're broken up 37 and 2, but essentially what I'll do is, when I get near 400, because I think it's 370-something, then I will run the entire gauntlet, because you can open up every single chest and get the bonus chest with the extra rewards. Little side tip there. But every single day... I'll run that. Now, you'd say that you like to play solo, um, but one of my favorite things to do are, are these things, these Accursed Towers. The Accursed Towers every single day, or whenever I log on, you can run through little bounties here. They're not bounties, but you can run through and basically clear it and just get great rewards really quickly. You're just basically button mashing through. Some points in time, your towers are gonna be getting attacked where you need to protect this. Other points in time, you're gonna be running through and seeing how many um, of these shards you can collect in the meantime, which is going to benefit your clan. Once you own one of these, you'll then be able to just go into here. You'll be able to go into your clan. You'll be able to come on over here to Accursed Towers and go to your battle map. I know this is getting confusing. And you could just collect passive rewards for doing absolutely nothing. So that's a fun one too. If you're not in a clan, you don't have the ability to do this. If you're not in an active clan, you don't have the ability to do this either. But if you are in a clan and you are in an active clan, that's a great thing that I like to do every day as well. But there are more things, uh, specifically two more things. One of them we already touched on, and that's dungeons. It's not bad practice to run three dungeons per day so you can unlock your one piece of uh, high quality secondary equipment. It's going to give you the extra rewards for doing it, and it's probably 15 minutes worth of your time. Um, and it's also beneficial. will give you rewards if you 
run one challenge rift and at least one elder rift per day um, just based on what you get rewarded for if you look at your quests you can see what other things as you can see here six elder rifts you get some extra battle pass progression um, gaining hilts you'll get stuff finding things you'll get stuff and you have your normal activities throughout the day today bestiary if i collect 10 monstrous essence i get double the battle pass progression for someone like you you buy the battle pass but you never make it until the end because it is tough it's tough to make it till the end um that'll really help you and by the way i mentioned the fervent fang gems you get more than two per battle pass because you get two just at the close of it right there i believe if you pay for the battle pass the five dollar you get uh you get them at the beginning as well but you'll get them for free as well if you don't decide to pay man this there's, there's a lot of stuff you could do every day you could do um you could do a little bit of battlegrounds if you want to do pvp because you get rewarded for that but a lot of times people aren't into that for me and i'll give you the list right now it's going to be an elder rift it's going to be the bounty board it's going to be the sanctum and I'm going to be running through and going through my towers if we have any towers locked down. And, of course, any dungeons or things like that. Sounds like a lot, though. I know. It sounds... Maybe I made it more confusing for you. I'm sorry if I did. No, no, no. I, I think that that's great. So there's one thing I want to ask you. Mm -hmm. So take the clan out of it. Um, so so warband. So it's like one thing that I can create as a warband, right? And and I've got a warband, and there's like a, just me in there, and I or maybe like one other person that I met a couple days ago. So there's... There's something that's happening in the war band with buffs as well, mm -hmm. that there's this whole thing. Is there a reason I should be doing anything with the war band? Like, does it help me at all for any reason that if I don't have four players, right? And there's, let's say we got one or two people in there. Uh, I just want to ask that because I don't have their curse tower, as you mentioned, because I'm not in a clan. War bands are very difficult. Even myself, I'm here on YouTube. I have a clan. It's tough to get a group of eight people in a warband or even four that are required to do a lot of these activities that are really dedicated and that'll keep to a schedule and participate in all the things that you get from a warband. Um, but if you can get four, there are great rewards that you can get. I'll show you a couple of them right now as I'm visiting the castle, which is where my warband stays. First of all, through doing events, and we don't need to go into what specifics those are, you can get Warband chests, which offer gear, which go in your warband stash, which you could then borrow one piece at a time. Notice there are green arrows up. That means these are things that are stronger that I could wear. Reason I'm not choosing them? Notice here, I have my set property buff. If I were to put this piece on, my combat rating would go up, but my uh, I would lose this, increases the duration of all my beneficial effects on your party members by 30%. So I choose to not do that, but you get access to gear. Also, you get access to all of these different rooms. And inside of these rooms, you can get just passive buffs as well. I'm not sure which room is mine. It's been a while since we visited one. Oh, this is not my room, um, so I can't see. But you'll notice people, myself right here, damage done is increased by 3.5%. You get these room management enhancements from being in a warband. I, I think you're seeing right now that Blizzard wants players to play together inside of Diablo Immortal. It's uh, a big focus of their game. And also, if you come over here, you have... Whoop, did I did I pass it by? I think I did. Um, there's another thing that you could do right here, which is the Tableau, which is, as you can see, as you upgrade your Tableau from grabbing more of these items, the Warband Activity Points, you get more bonuses to Strength, Intelligence. You're basically making your character stronger. So there are multiple ways, plus there's events that you could do inside of Warbands that are super fun. But, to be very honest, it's very difficult. You need you need four buddies, at least four buddies, that are down to meet on a Monday night and do Heliquary together. And meet on a Thursday and do Heliquary. And do defense of the castle together. And it doesn't take a lot of time, but it takes coordination. And as you know, as an adult with a family... Sometimes 9 o'clock at night on a Monday, that's family time. That's wifey time, and you just don't have time to hook up with your friends for 20 minutes to do Heliquary. But there are definitely buffs that you get from a warband if you have a serious enough group to play with to participate in that, whether you're in a clan or not. Okay, yeah, I, I wanted to ask that because I have been doing some of the warband stuff, and I saw that thing right there, you know, the tableau. I think I've got, like, one weapon in there, so that's, that's a whole other question for later on. I think that getting the buffs i just wanted to make sure that those buffs are actively doing something for me and there's a reason to uh to do it yep. okay now now it takes me to kind of the final thing obviously being a little bit newer in the game you know a lot of folks have already finished elder rifts uh challenge rifts and stuff like that right like they've gone through them 
Uh, I, I am still, you know, I think I'm like level 40 on the challenge rifts as an example. Can you talk me through the challenge rifts, the the elder rifts and the hell aquarium? Like what, where, where should I be spending a brunt of my time outside of regular dungeons? And, and what's the most beneficial for me as a, as a player? That's a great question. I'm taking us over to the rifts right there. I was just showing Hell Aquary, which is kind of what you get to do when you're when you're with your warband. You can also, by the way, do Hell Aquary solo. Uh, not solo, but with a random group, a matchmaking. The thing that you can't get that I love to get from it is right over here, by the way, a little side tip. From this merchant, you can buy every week a legendary crest. This is a um this is a red legendary crest for sixteen hundred platinum, which you could farm for free which is going to guarantee you a legendary gem. Maybe a one star, maybe a five out of five star. Usually not a five out of five. This one can't be sold. It's bound to your class, bound. It's bound to your character. You can't sell it. But this eternal legendary crest, you can sell in the market. You can only unlock this after completing a warband event. So it still costs the same, but there's a chance that you unlock a five out of five star legendary gem that you could sell in the market and you can get 500,000 platinum for it. If you hit those small odds, you can completely deck out your entire character with one star gems and even start pushing two star gems if you were to, you were to use that as a, as a piece of currency. Now, the reason that I bring this up about warbands is it ties us directly into our uh, Elder Rifts right here because Elder Rifts, you're gonna be running these one for fun and two to get legendary gems. That's the purpose of these. When you put in your legendary crests, it, uh, an eternal or a regular legendary crest will guarantee you a legendary gem of some sort, it's guaranteed. If you go ahead and go with rare crests, there's a chance you also get runes, which are another resource that you can use to craft these because you can craft gems as well. Um, that's again, uh, probably something for our episode two of this video, if we go more specific into gems. But here, I want to take you into what's more important, because this is where you're going to get your legendary gems. But this is where you're going to be getting more of that combat rating. This challenge rift, which you can run with friends or by yourself. Obviously, when you run with other people, the damage or the difficulty is bumped up. But you could get some really powerful friends to run and guide you through these and really push progression. But when you do this, you get XP. We love XP. It's going to progress you. You can get high quality equipment, legendary gear, but you get cryptic crystals or maybe at your level when you're at down in the lower hell difficulty there. I think they were called enigmatic crystals. These are essential. And the biggest problems that I see people doing is looking at me and saying, I don't know why my combat rating is so low. And I look at their secondary gear and the levels are two or three. To upgrade these secondary pieces of gear, you need those crystals. You get those crystals the most abundantly through challenge rifts. You want to get these up because you gain combat rating from doing that. The higher your secondary gear, the higher your combat rating, the higher your combat rating, the further you can push yourself in challenge rifts. I used to really enjoy Elder Rifts better. But now that I realize how valuable these are, that it can make me stronger, and that these get more and more difficult as you go, it's it's a lot more fun. Little pro tip here, every um, every couple of levels that you go, every five levels, notice it's 60 enigmatic crystals here, but look at this, 300 at level 255. Every five levels, you get a big bump. Sarge, if you were to spend an hour one day just grinding these, maybe with maybe with a friend or someone that was higher level, or maybe you and I could hop on and spend an hour doing it, you would gain so much combat rating just from all the crystals that you would get that you'd then be able to go ahead and upgrade your secondary gear, which according to your hell difficulty changes in the last week or so is gonna need to be upgraded anyway. You would get so much combat rating with the combination of the two. Now remember, if you upgrade a, a gear, piece of gear, a secondary or a primary, it's actually the slot you're upgrading. So if I remove this Awakener's Urge and I put something else in there because I just got to a new hell difficulty level, this level 13 is gonna remain in that slot. So you're not having to worry about, oh no, I just 
spent all of those crystals on this piece of gear and now I'm pulling it out. No, it's the slot itself. So it's a nice quality of life thing there that pulls out any excessive amount of grind. So for someone looking for combat rating, you're gonna wanna focus on challenge rifts. For someone that wants some legendary gems, you're gonna work on elder rifts. What I typically do, anytime I get 10 legendary crests, I'll come over here, I'll put three of them up top, and then there's an option to add seven, and I'll run all 10 at a time. I make it into a video on the channel because it's fun, and I hope, I, I cross my fingers, that one of the ones that's a five star will be able to be sold, and I can just land a ton of platinum to kind of build up my gems. Uh, hasn't happened yet, but we're working on it. So that's the difference between the two. Two very different purposes of both, although they're both very similar as far as the gameplay goes. But Challenge Rifts, they can get very, very difficult. And I actually did an interview with one of my whale friends yesterday, and he was pushing and giving tips on how to push high level above your combat rating Challenge Rifts with low combat rating. And well, we'll leave the tips for that trick in that video, but uh, definitely a good challenge for yourself. But again, you're way behind on challenge rifts. I'm behind myself. And it's just spending some time doing that. Um, and if you're looking for combat rating after doing your daily bounty boards and things like that, that's probably the thing that you should be doing next just to try and get those level up. Probably, you know, it may arguably even be a little bit more important than running dungeons right now for you looking for combat rating. Okay, well, that, that that's good. Okay, so challenge rifts, um, that, that, that's my pro. Well, obviously doing my daily task like I have been, so bounties and all that, um, but uh, looking at challenge rifts and then focusing on dungeons and stuff like that because uh, the, the set items is, is what I got out there. So that's great, man. Thank you so much. I, I feel smarter and dumber at the same time, right? The dumber <laughs> part of me is because I've been uh, playing the game wrong in a lot of ways. Uh, I don't like to read. Uh, don't Don't hold it against me. Uh, but I do appreciate your time because there's a lot of these little things like locking the gems and there's just a lot of little pieces that you can watch a thousand videos, but when you get an opportunity to talk to somebody like you, um, and I know there's a lot of really good uh, immortal creators, it really mm -hmm. helps because you guys are constantly in the game and you're seeing all these things, uh, you're doing the nuances. Uh, so I appreciate that. Thanks yeah, up. no problem. And let's be honest here. I'm learning stuff all the time too. I'm also someone that doesn't read through all of the text. I. I don't know, I just can't sit still long enough to do that. But I play every day, I've been doing it for a year, so there's things you pick up along the way. It was only a few months ago I realized about that locking the gems feature, which has been there since day one. Um, but I try and keep up in the game, and you really brought a great, my, my attention on, and it's a great point, that there's new players joining this game every single day that have no idea what's going on. Because this is a mobile game, but there is so much depth inside of Diablo Immortal that you can come into the game, be overwhelmed, uninstall, and never pick it up again. So being able to do something like this is really great, specifically for players that are brand new or players that just aren't, just more casual. They're just more casual players and could use these tips so much so that I think we should do another video in the future with some more questions. Like we talked about crafting legendary gems. We didn't even touch on charms, which is the most janky and confusing system inside of the game. Um, but. I appreciate you coming through today. Uh, we went a, definitely a lot longer form than we typically do in a video. Guys, if you're watching and you enjoy this type of a video, let me know in the comments section below. Let's get a hashtag made it down below as well if you're here at this point in the video. And I did mention earlier that my friend Senile Sarge here, who's been my friend for, man, it's gotta be like 13 years we've been internet buds. This is the first time we've done a video together. Um, you have a YouTube channel called Senile Sarge. You focus on multiple different games. Why don't you take a minute and let us know what you're doing over there and we'll pop it up on the screen so people could check out some of your latest content. And if they like it, maybe you'll earn a subscriber or two. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I primarily focus on survival games. I mean, that's probably where I spend the majority of my time. I am a lover of ARPGs, right? So Diablo is, uh, I would say Diablo is, is my game and always will be. Same thing with a game like Far Cry. Uh, but I've, I've learned to kind of keep my hobbies and what I love kind of separate, you know, so that that way they don't inter intertwine too much. But I'll do content every once in a while. But yes, do a lot of YouTube videos, survival based. And then, of course, I stream on Twitch as well. So I uh, appreciate you giving the time today, Echo, and uh, answering these questions. And, and don't worry, I've got a bag of about another 100 questions that uh, that new players definitely want to know. So I'd be happy to bring those and, uh, and ask those as well. I think we should do it. I enjoyed hanging out with you today. I think the community is going to enjoy learning a few new tips. And uh, well, let us know down below. We'll see you guys tomorrow with another video.